It is another gorgeous day here in Palm Beach, our little corner of paradise in the world. If you've not been here, hop on a plane, come to Palm Beach International Airport, which I think most recently was voted one of the nicest, bestest airports in the United States. It's, it's intimate. It's nice. All the airlines fly in there. And uh, you come across the bridge and you arrive in what we call paradise, Palm Beach, proper the island. This is Doug Evans, president and CEO of the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce, here with your guide to Palm Beach. It's, a, it's our podcast that we talk about all the important people here in town and what's going on behind the scenes, behind the hedges, at the parties, the galas, and most importantly, about the Chamber of Commerce and our incredible members who make what this town has come alive and make it the best place in the world to be. With me today is Dan Leva, who is the founder and owner of Shoreline Building. And uh, Dan, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. It's an honor to be here. I'm so glad you're here. You know, what's what's great about Dan is he's got this incredible business, which you start. Well, tell us what. Tell us your background. When did you start the business? Were you always uh, this wonderful builder of all these billion dollar houses, or tell us a little bit more about yourself and let us let's hear the background on this. So I went to uh, school at the University of Florida, and actually was on the civil and civil engineering track in pre med, which. Um, I had no interest in really pursuing construction as a career, um, <laughs> but I got talked out of, um, which, which I'm grateful for. They, they, they were very intentional about explaining um, how difficult it really is to be a doctor. And if you want to be a doctor to help people, then that's not enough. And these are all the reasons why. And they made it abundantly clear. And that, that was kind of like my, the passion I thought I, I wanted, but really I did, I did want to help. People, yeah. you know, and so um, we had a very good construction school and I had taken an internship when I was in high school working for um, the builder that actually built my parents home. So mm -hmm. so with that experience, I did enjoy that and uh, applied for the construction school. They, they It was a rigorous program, which I came to become very fond of and, and enjoyed and it opened some really good opportunities for me and I had an opportunity to work for some of some some really great builders um, out of Palm Beach and Palm Beach County um, over the course of the, the first several years of, of my career and I wanted to do things a little bit differently and um, while most builders are very focused on the tangible components and meeting schedules and, and getting to the end of the project. Um, I had a heart for the intangible things. Hmm. Um, such as, such as just gaining trust with, the, with the client and being highly and over communicative and really just making this process really enjoyable to them. Um, I, 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 time and time again, clients would come and say that they love their home, but didn't like, their builder. And I'm like, well, <laughs> to go through the process of everything involved and ultimately enjoy your home, but not enjoy the relationship or how things ended off with your builders is, is kind of doing something. And what's the point? As yeah, there's there's no point. You're, you're building, you're building, you're building an environment, a nest, a place that's, it's, it's your surroundings. And, and I don't think that the builders did anything wrong per se. I just think it was just a mismanagement of expectations or maybe they just never really connected with the client. So um, I was very intentional about developing a personal relationship with these clients and speaking to some of their insecurities and, and concerns that were more personal and, and, you know, g keeping them informed with weekly updates, with photos and information that ultimately doesn't add to the bottom line. No. It just makes them feel more comfortable and secure and, and, and makes them feel like you care. So I realized also that, um, when I made mistakes, which is inevitable, I came clean about those mistakes, oftentimes concerned that I might lose my job or, potentially be held accountable to paying for these mistakes, which sure. I obviously couldn't afford. And the clients were very receptive. They said, you know what, Daniel, you've saved us so much money. And with all the effort you've put into this, you know, you made a mistake. So what? And so I realized, you know what, they, it's, it's that, that really reaffirmed that there's more value to offer than just a product. It's beyond that. It's actually an experience. So my focus and the focus of our, our team is to give clients the 
an exceptional experience because building a home is a privilege Mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate that um, people don't really look forward to it. They just want to move in and people should enjoy every minute of that process. And so that's, that's, those are the intangibles that really, we really try to highlight. You know, I, my observation is I've done a couple of gut renovations in my life and a couple of builds. And, uh, uh, I only in all those, I'm glad you said what you said, Daniel, because in all those processes, I've only had one person I've worked with that I enjoyed the process. Mm. The rest were just difficult. It, it felt like a battle, like the, the builder didn't care or, and, and I know, I know you and your field are always very, very busy. You've got a bunch of projects going with a bunch of personalities, but I, I, I can only think of the one time that I did something once where I was generally thrilled with these folks and what's the intangibles, you know, when, when, when we finished the process, the one time I was happy and I want to ask you about this, um, we were traveling. And uh, we got this text message email saying, we're finished. You can move in. What can we do to make sure when you get here on that late flight from, I think it was Asia, that you can walk into your place? I said, what do you mean? They said, draw us a map. We'll at least put the bedroom and kitchen together for you. Now, they're not going to make any money on that. But I'll never forget to this day, I walk in, boxes everywhere. But that master bedroom right down to where I drew the lamps and the tables and the kitchen was good to go. I will never forget this builder for doing that. So those are, those are the kinds of things you said I want out of the bottom line. But I would, uh, I guess for somebody like you, I would say, if you want to go to somebody, go to them and here's the reason why, right? As opposed to, I use them, I would never go back there again in my life kind of a thing. And to me, with you, you're picking everything out from the paint color to the walls, to the doorknobs, to all the stuff, right? And and that's imp- that. don't you think that's a sense of ownership, a sense of process? It is. Ultimately, we are responsible for the full gamut. Um, and while we have several design consultants who have influence over the selections and where they go and the materiality and, and the vision, um, we're just one 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 small component of, of, of how it all comes together. And we do bear a fair amount of the responsibility, most of it. But for us, we, the way in which we make progress is by understanding that in order to make good decisions, you should be well-informed. Information is powerful. Mm-hmm. And, in order to empower your clients or your decision makers to contribute meaningfully, they need to have all the details and all the information. Um, and sometimes to the molecular level, right? Sure. And, and when they have good information, they make quick decisions because they're easily and readily able, able to recognize value values different to everybody. Um, and, and they're able to make quick decisions and we're able to move forward because they have, all the information. So we're, we're really focused on understanding their needs, understanding their value and taking all the information needed to present it to them so they can make quick and informed decisions. And they can, because at the end of the day, whether it's this shade of white or this shade of gray, it doesn't really, um, you you can get stuck there, but understanding why it's important to go in this color palette or that, and and everything that ties together is is where you want to, um, where you want to give them that sense of trust and, and, and confidence. And but to, see, when you talk about that, which I, <laughs> I would laugh on these things, it's like there are three different colors of white here. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I don't see them. And I, I've got a creative background. I'm from the arts, basically. And I'm like, I don't see them. It's like you don't want to go with the green white, the white white, the warm white, the whatever. You want a blue white or whatever it might have. Been. I said, okay, and it made sense once they put it together. So in your, in your journey, so you work for other people. And, and when you were doing that, do you, those experiences, of course, it's, it's the quilt of creating who you are today. Were you seeing examples of how you wanted to be? Cause I want to transition from how you learned from your previous employers to your place to saying, I want to do this on my own and start my own company. So were you learning from them saying they did these things this way, that way, this is how I would do it. And was that your transition to opening shoreline? Um, more so, I- I worked for some exceptional builders who delivered an amazing product. Um, Unfortunately, clients didn't always see 
the fullness of the value of what they were doing because no one cares how the sausage is made. They just care yeah. about the end result, right? And when 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 clients aren't aware or brought into the process to see how hard you're working for them and everything that you're doing for them and how you're moving mountains behind the scenes, they they can either take it for granted or or make their own speculations or assumptions. And and oftentimes um it's just managing expectations. You know, when, when we meet with clients, you know, early on in the business, I learned a lesson, you know, we used to promise and say yes to everything they wanted because I, 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 I genuinely wanted to appease them, make them happy, and make them happy. Yeah, sure. But then I put myself in a very tight corner and I found myself, um, driving myself crazy to, to deliver on things that I couldn't even control. So I realized, you know what? To have a great experience, I'm going to give every client a, I'm not going to sugarcoat the, the, the facts and I'm going to give them the ugly truth and give them actually every reason not to hire me. You know, the, 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 <laughs> the likely it is likely that this project is going to cost more than any budget we put together yeah. and anything that we ultimately agree on, because that's just the nature of this. It's going to take longer than you think. And you're going to have more speed bumps and hurdles than you're probably prepared for. But in all of that, we're going to operate full transparency. We're going to operate above reproach. Um, and you're going to know where every single cent went. And there will be no question on, on where the accounting is. We mm -hmm. hold ourselves accountable to you and to ourselves. And when there's hurdles or speed bumps that are out of our control, we're going to have plan A, plan B, and all the solutions to these problems for you to weigh in on. And you're going to know the truth. Hey, we're stuck here. Help us get out of it. Contribute to the process rather than only giving you the portion of the story that we feel you need to know while we try to tie up all the loose ends in the background and then we get caught hands down. So, sure. so, so I think just clients just want to be included. They want to trust. And they, they, for us, it's not about delivering them a good home. It's, it's, it's beyond that because we do it because this is how we find fulfillment in serving our clients and, and building on that trust. So it goes beyond the home, you know, and we, we build them a good home because it means more to us than it does to them. And so they're just benefiting from being our ideal client profile, right? And our ideal client profile is is something we're very intentional to to preserve because when clients are appreciative of the value we bring, we do a better job. Sure. Yeah. So hire us if you're the right fit for us, and we're adversely, you know, we're we're, we're also the, the same, the right. It's, fit da it's dating. It's dating. It's dating. It's, it's dating. So that that's if if you're not our ideal client profile, you don't want to be involved in the process. You want it to be turnkey, and you just care about budget and price. Get it and, done. And and, and 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 timeline, and you and, and and you don't want to maximize the value. Then find the person that is going to do that for you. For me, I want to. I want to optimize all the value I can offer you. And sometimes that requires being flexible in other areas. Makes total sense. Uh, if you uh, have forgotten where you're listening to, it's Doug Evans with the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce, president and CEO, and on another glorious day here in the Palm Beaches. And with me today is, uh, of course, we are taping in the Pod Populi Studios here in North Palm Beach, Palm Beach Gardens. If you've not been here, it's gorgeous here also to go shopping and dining, all kinds of good things. With me today is Daniel Leva, Shoreline Building and Shoreline Builders. And when did you start your company? What year did you do you move out of I work for somebody else to the I own my own company? What year was that? 2016. And was that a, was it a scary moment saying, uh, no net to catch me here? How'd you, how'd you do it? Because it, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. It was. I, um, I was recently married, and um, we had just closed on our on a little home in Palm Beach Gardens that we were in the process of renovating, which took us over a year. Um, and it really, it's, it really comes down to just the relationships, right? Everything is relationships and um, we, we do everything we can to protect those and preserve and invest in those relationships. And 
we had a couple architects that um, referred me to to their client, and the client asked for some advice. We gave him some advice, and one guy said, "Look, I I want you to just." Build my house. Build my house. And I trust you and I trust the direction you're going. And, and not that the builder I was working for wasn't a great builder. I thought, I think I learned a lot from him and I think he does a really great job. They just connected with me better. Of you course. Know? So you said that it's people connecting to people. Yeah. So we, it was a substantial home. Um, and I handled all, handled all of it, started the company out of what's, what was my, first daughter's nursery and that's that was our <laughs> headquarters and i was the ceo and the janitor and the the, the guy that mailed the checks and the you know that's I, being an entrepreneur <laughs> right there period so those were fun days and then i eventually convinced uh some you know what, what um, somebody to take a chance and 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 coming to work for me and and they believed in the vision and the drive and that was i think I, we hired our first employee just over 5 years ago and now we have thirty employees. So now you're, oh, so. that's huge because you're you're seven years into into this into this mm-hmm. this company and the journey. That's that's a lot of employees. That's a lot of people. But clearly, um, and I'm not saying this to be nice. It's just it's it's your philosophy on business that you built your reputation, you built a relationship. So clearly, you can expand the business even through COVID to get up to 30, 30 people. So now, Daniel, this is Palm Beach. This is, this, is, this is the episode of the universe as far as I'm concerned. When you say a substantial home, are you talking money? You talking square foot? You talk, uh, what's your definition oh. of substantial in this market, just out of curiosity? Substantial, I, I guess it was the, the first, when I said substantial, I was referring to the first project, was, which was a 10,000 square foot home. That was it's a lot of house. Very, you know, uh, it was very modern and minimalist with a lot, with, with, very complicated structure and um, and it was a fun challenge, but substantial could be, doesn't necessarily have to be a large home. Um, yeah. It could be a, a, a client with very, very high expectations. It could be a restoration that, that requires um, some creative thinking. A, on, diff- a difficult yeah. lot, a, a difficult, difficult loca- lot, location. Tough, exactly. Access could be very limited or restrictive. So um, you could also have, um, you know, there's there's a number of, of 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 obstacles and hurdles that that can make a project um, substantially time consuming and and require and, and, and require a lot of effort. Yeah, so, and I know I know just from uh, my position of the chamber and going to the town council meetings, there's a lot of there's a lot of guidelines mm-hmm. when you build or renovate a house in Palm Beach on the island. Um, you know, to, from if you're painting it the same color it was before, this has all got to be approved. And for you um, doing that, that's got to be a, a, a not challenging because you've done it a lot now, but it's got to be a, a process that takes time, knowing that there are certain guidelines in Palm Beach that you have to adhere to. Does that add time? Does that add cost? Does that add difficulty for you as a builder? Or now that you know what you're getting into, maybe you've, you've got the ropes and you've figured it out. Yes, it adds time and costs, um, but ultimately there, there, there are, there's a process and while everybody wants things done, wants things done quicker, um, you have to be patient and have endurance and take care of what you can control. I can't control that, that how long the RCOM process takes or, or, or any architectural review process, but I can appreciate the spirit in which those you boards exist what are they looking for what are they attempting to do and i don't want to fight the process i want to understand and contribute to it so they're trying to preserve the authenticity and the sophistication of a neighborhood yeah. or an area how do we make sure that we recommend the best consultants and the best architects and and work with the best trades to comply with that and 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 buy into what they're trying to preserve and protect. So I think making that effort to understand and just rolling with the punches, you know? You know, when I think of, of you as, as uh, I think of you as more than just a builder, clearly you've got an eye for detail and design and, and beauty and, and structure. You know, when I look at the environment of Palm Beach and I live in town, um, I appreciate folks like you, Daniel, who understand that we're trying to, in a really wonderful way, preserve the experience uh, in the environment that is Palm Beach. I mean, when people come across those bridges in the town, you're kind of like, oh, 
It's, it's breathtaking. Mm-hmm. It's special. And and the, the the folks who volunteer at Archon, the folks who volunteers are our town council folks. They're all volunteers, by the way. They don't get paid. It's it's amazing to me um, that they will volunteer their time to go through all of this. Um, they're doing something really very special in a really beautiful place. And I can't think of, and I've like you, I've been to Beverly Hills, I've been to Aspen, been to all these places. And none of them, even even the Hamptons, let's face it, that's a collection of villages. None of them have the consistency of environment with builders that you have created as a builder and, and, and an impresario and an entrepreneur to contribute to the, the quality of life of the community. And to me, I would think that you would find that somewhat interesting in a way when you get a new project. It, it is very interesting. It's very rewarding for us. I mean, uh, the first um, builder I ever worked for did tell me, Early on, wait till you finish your first project and how rewarding that's going to feel. And he was right. As soon as I finished the first project that I saw from start to finish, it just, there was a sense of accomplishment. There was, a, it, was it was very rewarding. And um, it, it continues to be what jolts us forward is, is driving by and seeing that we're not only creating um, little pieces of art, right? That, it's art, that, yeah. that, that will it's outlive art. us. But we're also, more importantly, actually, is we're we're creating a lifestyle and 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 contributing to to the ability for a client to to live in a special way. And and one client, when we, we do a lot of qualitative research with with our former um, clients. You know, we ask them, "Hey, what what did you like about the process? What did you not like?" And one one homeowner said, "The right home will change the way you live." You know, and, and it's interesting how we did some improvements and modifications and that's where he spends majority of his time now. Oh. And, and we get to provide that for families and people who live and allow you to, to make a difference. You spend a lot of time in your home. I mean, it's, it's, it's your, your beginning, your end and your nest. And, and I understand that. So when it comes to your projects, I'm assuming you do all, all sizes or mm-hmm. do you have a, do you have a threshold? Do you have, we won't go, we won't work on anything X, Y, or Z, or are you pretty much open to suggestion and people calling you and saying, Hey, Daniel, I've got this idea. I'd like to do this house or this renovation or this restoration. And, um, but you all said or said earlier in this, in this podcast that it's gotta be the right fit. Exactly. That's, that's most important. So, you know, we have a unique set of skills and we, we add value in certain niches more than others. We used to want the, the big blue chip projects, only True. the ocean fronts, only the big massive, <laughs> right? But, but they're not small. Lately, um, we really just want to work for good clients who appreciate the value that we bring to the table. Um, there are thresholds, you know, we're, we're not super scalable. Our boutique approach is, is re- requires you to rely on a, a, a talented group of individuals who all have the same approach and, and, um, passion for what we do. So it's not something that you can just, can just add to that roster. Um, so we have to be very selective with the projects we take on and make sure that if we can only handle this many projects, let's make sure that they are for the best clients we can find predominantly and also um, projects that will be challenging and portfolio builders. It's it's nice to reflect and look back and say, wow, like we, we – conquered that challenge. Otherwise, that you, de- otherwise you dilute your ability to be really, really great. And then that word gets around quite honestly. So I've known you for a few months. Mm-hmm. Clearly you joined the chamber of commerce. Thank you very much. The Palm beach chamber of commerce. You are one of the architects, uh, one of the builders of the real estate and development council, which we've created with you and uh, Jeff Sofer of, you know, coastal gardens, of course. And um, you getting more involved in the chamber is also a contribution to the community. So I want to thank you for that as we build out the chamber even more. Um, before we run out of time here, why, why would you choose to like increase your involvement as busy as you are with 30 employees and your, your, your company? Why would you get even more involved uh, to, the, to the granular? And uh, Daniel, I got to tell you, I, we, we're spending more and more time together. You're involved at the granular level, which is great because a lot of businessmen like you who are super busy don't take the time to do it and you're doing it yes we we you know we we kind of 
dipped our toe in the water, attended a breakfast, then said, you know what, we want to commit to a table. Then we um, committed to joining the board of trustees Correct. and now state development committee. And um, with each step, we've we've been able to to meet very interesting people and 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 develop strong relationships that that um, over time have been very um, rewarding yeah, and beneficial, and hopefully beneficial too. Yeah. But but also it's 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 not about what the what you can get out of the chamber, but also how can you contribute and make it better and, 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 and help influence or direct its vision. Right. And, and getting behind leaders like yourself. And we've, we've seen some amazing um, developments since you um, took, took your role and, and it's excited to get behind a leader who has great vision and cares and is motivated and, 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 and has this momentum. We want to be a part of that momentum. And it's, it's rewarding, you know, to, to have an impact and make a difference and not just think, focus on how, how's my business going to benefit from this? Yeah. How am I going to profit? Look, those, the relationships, you do the right things for people. People want to do business with who they like. Um, and, and that will come, but that's, that's not the primary goal. I, th I think the chamber's done a lot for us. It's opened a lot of doors. It's, it, it put us in touch with our f initial business coach who was a uh, huge mentor for me. That's in, great. In, in the outset. That's terrific. You know, so, so there, there have been little um, workshops that came from the chamber that we participated in and just opened mm -hmm. some, some, some great doors. And I didn't expect that. And I think it's, it'd be great to be able to offer that for other people. You know, um, when, when I see, when I see people's, taking the challenge, the same plunge, you know, they, 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 they start on their own, they, they go out on their own and they don't know where to turn and, you know, Hey, come to, come to a breakfast, sit at our table, meet some people, you know, and, and you help you, you're, you're, you're helping them get their business launched. You know, that's, that's special, you know, it's rewarding to, to help them as well. And, and whether it leads to something or there's some, you never know, right? You plant the seeds. And what I think is important about this, you're an entrepreneur, you started your own company. And uh, Florida has become through, uh, for a lot of reasons, COVID, taxes, the whole nine yards, has become a very fertile ground for entrepreneurs. And I, I personally believe there's even more and more business to go around as, as more than a thousand people a day move to Florida, which is great as far as I'm concerned, you know, and, and of course we want your business to just grow and flourish. Um, and so I'm, I'm grateful to you and thankful and your compliments are very, very nice. Thank you very much. But you know, it's, it's all about you, the members, as far as I'm concerned. So if they want to get a call, uh, get in touch with you, uh, you're listening today to the Palm Beach Chamber podcast. How do they get a hold? Tell who, how do we get hold of Daniel Leva? How do you do this? Well, our, our contact information is on our website, shorelinebuildinggroup.com. Google us. And, Very simple, uh, shorelinebuildinggroup.com. Yeah. And uh, we are located here in West Palm Beach, and I'm sure you'll see our signs around. You can, but um, you can send us an, an email or, or call the office and they'll put you in touch with me. And, and the boss, the boss will get the email or the phone call, yes, which right. I think is very, very important. And, you know, it's, it's nice to know that, you know, you've got your hands on the business and you really want to bring it in to make it happen. So Daniel, thank you for taking time out of your crazy schedule. I don't realize you have 30 employees. That's to me, that's <laughs> a lot of people. Um, so for you to carve out time for the, the, Pod Populae Studio podcast means a lot to me. So you've been listening to Doug Evans, president and CEO of the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce on yet another perfect day in the Palm Beaches as far as every day here to me is a perfect day. I wake up, Daniel, and I'm like, I'm so happy to be in Palm Beach in South Florida. Um, it's joyful. It's happy. The people here like you are just the nicest people to work with. And when you said earlier in our discussion this morning uh, that you believe in relationships, and, and I, if this sounds like an endorsement of you as a human being and a, and a nice person, watching how you've interacted with other people on the Real Estate and Development Council, other members of the chamber, uh, the trustee lunch that we had recently where you walked around the room, everybody knows you. To me, that's a testament to your, to your ability, to your, to your drive, to your belief in what builds a good business. So thank you for being here with us today. Doug Evans, Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce, your guide to the Palm Beaches. And we'll be back with more podcasts. Wherever your podcasts, you find them, tune in there, 
Check them every week, do what you want to do. We've got a whole bunch of great people coming up here. So Pod Populi, thank you for being a sponsor of the Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce and uh, make it a great day.